hello everyone welcome back in this video we are going to do a small assignment on how to calculate exceedance probability and return period using the two methods we discussed in the flood frequency analysis video what i have done here is i have given you a time series this is the same time series that we used in the flood frequency analysis video so this is the annual maximum series for wabash river from 1901 to 2005 so we have 104 years of data and i'm asking you to calculate the average recurrence interval which will be the return period and exceedance probability for the for the two flow rates 60,000 CFS and 80,000 CFS so in order to get the 60,000 CFS with the first method what we do is we draw a line at the 60,000 CFS and then we try to find out how many times the flow exceeded that value and so i'm going to count so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 and i have done this before <laughs> so the number of occurrences for 80 or 60000 cfs is 30 which means the number of intervals is 30 minus 129 so the average recurrence interval for 60,000 CFS flow is total number of uh, years so in this case it's from 1901 to 2005 so 104 years of data so this will be 104 divided by the number of intervals which is 29 and when you do this you get 3.58 years and because we really don't use fractional years so this is like four years okay so the return period or the average recurrence interval associated with 60,000 CFS flow is four years and if you want to find the probability that Q greater than or equal to 60,000 CFS will be 1 over 4 which is 0 0.25 or 25 percent okay so there is a chance that the flow will exceed 60,000 CFS there is a 25 percent probability that the flow will exceed 60,000 CFS every year so I have done this for you for 60,000 I am also asking you to do this for 80,000 so again to do it for 80,000 you will draw a line here and calculate the number of times the flow exceeded this 80,000 CFS threshold so that also I have done and I'll just give you the number of occurrences and then you can do the rest so number of occurrences of 80,000 CFS flow is 9 okay so once you do that the rest is easy so the number of intervals in this case is 8 then you get the average by dividing 104 by 8 and then you can get the probability okay so that's the first part um, the second part is again calculating the return period associated with two different flows so in this case I am asking you to use the ranking method or the Weibull plotting position method usually we are given only this to save time 
what I have done is I have already sorted the flow for you. So the sorting is from maximum to minimum. So the maximum flow we have is 190,000 and the minimum is 30,800. So once we sort the flow, we'll rank them. So one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So the count is twelve. And then we get the exceedance probability is rank divided by count plus one. In, in many books you will find this as m divided by n plus 1 where m is the rank and n is the count okay so ep is equal to m divided by n plus 1 this also I have done for you so I'll just write down the values so this will be 1 divided by 13 1 divided by 13 which is 0 0.08 Okay, so this will be 0 0.15, 0 0.23, 0 0.31. I'm going to do some of these and let you do the others. And then for, so I think for 40,000 CFS, we at least need these. So I'll so for 44,000 we have 0 0.46, for 41,500 we have 0 0.53. While I'm doing all this, let's go ahead and also give you that. <laughs> so for 8 we have 0 0.61, 0 0.69, 0 0.76, 0 0.84 and 0 0.92. Once you have the exceedance probability, then T is equal to 1 over EP, okay? So this will be 1 over 0 0.08 is 13. So again, 1 divided by 0 0.08. This will be 1 divided by 0 0.15, so 6.5, 4.3, 3 3.25, 2.6, 2.2, 1.9, 1.6, 1.4, 1.3, 1.1. 1 .1. Now, once we have that, the flow that we are interested in is 40,000 CFS. So you really don't see 40,000 CFS in this column or this column. What we do here is we get the return period associated with the two values around 40,000 CFS. So we have 41,100 and 37,300. What you can do now is you can interpolate the time or the return period between these two rows and then get the exact return period associated with 40,000 CFS flow. So I'm assuming all of you know how to do linear interpolation, but I'll just give you that. So T for 40,000 CFS will be, so I will interpolate between 41,100 and 37,300. So the return period associated with 41,100 is 1 1.6. And then I get the slope of that. 41,400 or 100 minus 40,000 divided by 41,100 minus 37,300 and then you multiply this by the difference of time period between the two 1.6 minus 1.4 and once you do that you end up with a value of I think it's close to 1.55 
and again because we don't represent um, time in in fraction i'm just going to say two year okay so the return period associated with 40000 cfs is two year now i'm asking you to do it also for 50000 cfs so for 50000 cfs we you will interpolate values between 49,000 and 57,000. I'm not going to do the calculations for you, but just by looking at this, you are going to see that the return period for 50,000 CFS is going to be close to 3.25. It's It will definitely be less than 3.5, which you can approximate to three. So, um, I will just write down that answer and let you do the linear interpolation. Okay, so this is how you can use the viable plotting position to get the accidents probability and return period associated with any flows. And then this is another way of doing it. So in this assignment, we looked at two methods for calculating accidents probability and return period. Both methods are valid. Um, and you can use whichever you want so with that i'll stop and if you have any questions feel free to email me okay and thank you bye